And we are back here on Fox Providence, the final edition of PC Hoops with Coach Cooley. And we have three of the best journalists in the state who cover Providence College basketball year round and know the program like the back of their hand, Kevin McNamara to my right and to my left, Bill Koch and Brendan McGare. We just heard from the head coach guys and K-Mac, we will start with you. Yeah. Just overall thoughts, reading his emotions and the, the, the tenor of how he spoke. Well, the key word that jumped out at me was change. He, he's weighing change. And I, and I think we, we've heard that from him, that the fact that he's doing it so openly is, you know, from our point of view as journalists, awesome. That's great. Uh, this, is, this does damage to this program, uh, whether he stays or whether he goes. Uh, it, it, that it's so open and clearly has been in the works for a few weeks is, is different. And I, does, I do think it does damage to Providence. Bill? Yeah, I certainly give uh, Steve Napolillo, the Providence Athletic Director, some credit. He has a lot more patience than I would yeah. in these circumstances. I would be upset that my head coach was so openly flirting with another program at such an important time of the year going into the NCAA tournament. Uh, and this feels more uncertain than any previous overtures that Ed Cooley received from other schools. Brennan, why is that? It's a far cry from 2016 when we had the first contract extension and we had the phrase Friar for Life come into play. This feels a lot different. It could be the end of a marriage that has been a great 12-year run. It was really a tale of two halves of the season. They start 17-5, and five, they're 9-2, and two, and uh, Friar fans are thinking potential repeat as Big East regular season champions. You're dreaming of a second, second weekend uh, in, the, in the NCAA tournament, and then it ends in a 4-7 and seven record. What, are, what were some of the factors at play, KMAC? How much was it execution? How much was it fatigue? Or how much was it speculation of Ed Cooley's departure? Yeah, I, I think the kids are pretty isolated as far as the you know coach situation. I think their backcourt, just look at their backcourt. Uh, two fifth-year seniors, Jared Bynum and Noah Locke, uh, their play went down. Simple as that. College basketball is a guard game. I also think Bryce Hopkins definitely got tired. I think the focus on Bryce Hopkins probably got on him. And, and then a horrible draw for Kentucky. And shame on us for not seeing it ahead of time. Mm. Kentucky has studs. Now, not a vintage Kentucky team, but we saw Oscar Shibwe. He was Dennis Rodman on steroids sure. in that game. Providence had no one close to Oscar <laughs> Shibwe. And they have other talent, high talent guys at other positions. In a pickup game between those two teams, I get three, maybe four of the first picks are on Kentucky. 25 rebounds for Shibwe, the most against the Friars team in NCAA tournament history. Brendan, for you, as you look at that and as you look at the back half of this season, how do you divvy up the pie? I I execution, fatigue, the speculation, things like that. Well, I go to three-point shooting defense, and that was a glaring problem at the beginning of the year, and we chalked it up to eight new guys trying to come together. Looked like they righted the ship in the middle of the season, but the five games going into Kentucky, allowing 10 or more threes, Looked like the warts were reverted. And then Reeves on Friday night for Kentucky, five threes. Ed Cooley has always talked about the knowns. That was a known going into the game, and obviously the Friars desperately missed on that one. For sure. Bill, the Friars do get back to the tournament. They are one and done again as an 11 seed. Explain why the losses at St. John's and against Seton Hall at home on senior day were so damaging. Because the losses to UConn in stores and at MSG, those are okay losses. But those other ones to the Johnnies and the Pirates really hurt their chances of advancing in the tournament. Well, Noah Locke said at postgame in the locker room uh, on Friday night, those hurt their NCAA tournament seed chances. Mm -hmm. uh, knock them down to an 11. Put them in a spot where they were vulnerable going into the field. You look at last year, they're a four seed. They're playing in Buffalo. Big home support. Felt like a home crowd against South Dakota State and then again against Richmond. You look at the other night in Greensboro, Big Blue Nation was out in force. You put yourselves in a spot where you could play a real blue blood mm -hmm. in Kentucky, and that resume ultimately ended up hurting you badly. It was essentially a home game for Kentucky, Big Blue Nation there in Greensboro Coliseum. A year ago tonight, gentlemen, we were all planning our trips to Chicago, the United Center for the Sweet 16, mm -hmm. and boy, has this thing really turned 180 degrees. KMAC, why is this time different than the past? Well, college basketball is about the head coach. Simple as that. Uh, the players come and go, especially in this transfer portal age. The players really come and go. Uh, Providence has been fortunate to have a winning coach for 12 years. Nothing is forever. Now, I'm sure a lot of Providence fans, when they listen to Ed Cooley, he's forever. He's our hometown guy, blah, blah, blah. Things change. People's lives change. I thought Ed uh, brought up his wife numerous times. Maybe she wants to change. How, how can you fault him for that? Uh, it, we'll see what he does. Uh, certainly it sounds to me like he's leaning on leaving, uh, and nothing is forever. And that could be difficult for some Friar fans to accept, but nothing is forever. Yeah, that's what the head coach admitted. He said the decision, gentlemen, doesn't 
rely and, and lean into too much of the administration, relationships with admin, things like that, um, then what does it boil down to at the end of the day if he ultimately decides to leave for Washington, D.C.? Well, I think ultimately if you go to a new job, whether it's Georgetown or anywhere else, you are looking for a fresh start. You're looking to reset the clock. That adulation that comes with a new job, a new relationship, that is in place. Ed Cooley would more likely hear from Providence fans now about his five one-game eliminations in the NCAA tournament, about his inability to beat the Kentuckys and the Kansases and the North Carolinas of the world. Blue blood, certainly, but they would have hoped that 12 years on, you might be matching up with programs like that and be on more level footing with them. Um, you know, and certainly you look at, at Georgetown and you consider the advantages in that job, whether it's proximity to recruits, the largest endowment in the league, and the chance to restore the legacy of one of his heroes, the late John Thompson, those challenges appeal to somebody who is as ambitious as Ed Cooley. Yeah, let's dive into those, those topics a little bit more. Brendan, we'll start with you there. Lay out the jobs, the head coach at Providence versus the head coach at Georgetown and some of the pros and cons for the fans out there. Well, I think Bill hit on the nail on the head about legacy and chasing after John Thompson. You know, Coach uh, Cooley and I had a conversation a few years ago pertaining to John Thompson and how he was able to attend a practice when the, the Hoyas came in, Friars mid-80s, Cooley was a Central High School student. That was like almost like attending a White House briefing. Very rare to be involved in a circumstance like that. That stayed with Coach Cooley, obviously, throughout everything. We saw in 2020 when Coach Thompson passed away, he wore the shirt multiple games during that season. I think there's a part of Coach Cooley that would love to chase a legacy and maybe rebuild that Georgetown brand. Let, let's face it, has really been a non-factor since the Big East reconfigured, and even a little bit before that, I think it's been since 2007 that they've been to a Final Four. Yeah, they haven't won an NCAA tournament game, came back since the 2015 season. Yeah. They I, won I have one. to weigh in on that note. Sure, definitely. Fresh start. These coaches love fresh starts. Yeah. 12 years at Providence, guess what? Providence fans expect Ed Cooley to make the tournament. He, his, he's raised that expectation. Uh, and now they expect him to win games in the tournament. Yep. Awesome, I, I think that's fair sure. at this point. You go to uh, Georgetown, there's no expectations. For two years, I'm sure by three, third year, they like him in the tournament. And then once that gets you know, going three and four years, then they want him in the Sweet 16 in the Final Four. But this buys you a couple of years at more money in a different place and you know, for kind of a free ride for a little bit. Sure. And this is the one move that he can make and then retire. So I, I see it from both, both sides. When you look at trying to fill the shoes of the late, great John Thompson, I mean, how steep of, of the mountain is it to climb in order to even get close to what he built there with the Hoyas starting in the 80s? Well, the, the Hoyas that I know uh, that Ed Cooley grew up with, th that was Black America's team. Sure. That's not the case anymore. Uh, th that's spread out all around the country. Uh, that was a unique moment in time, and he was an iconic coach. Ed Cooley will not be John Thompson. Even if he wins at Georgetown, even if he wins a national championship at Georgetown, he'd be following John T Thompson's footsteps. He will not be John Thompson. There's only one John Thompson. That said, uh, I'm sure Ed Cooley to some degree and his friends and his coaching friends say, hey, listen, at Providence, you've done an unbelievable job. At Georgetown, you have a chance to maybe build it and go above Providence. That remains to be seen. All right, so our conversation is shifting a little bit more towards Ed Cooley probably taking the Georgetown job. It really sounds like that. He still has an opportunity to talk with Steve Napolillo and Providence mm -hmm. College, and that's where I also want to bring in the, the Providence angle. Bill, what does Providence need to do in these last hours, in these last days, in these last weeks, in order to give themselves the best chance to retain their guy? Well, it goes beyond finance for Ed or for his staff. This goes to his roster and whether or not he's going to be able to sustain his roster year over year going forward. And that starts with name, image, and likeness and the collective, how they can pay players, whether it's freshmen coming in, whether it's experienced players in the transfer portal. It is very difficult to build the roster the way they have the last two years. They've been very reliant on the portal. Their freshman recruiting hasn't been that great in recent seasons. It's much easier to have someone with you and develop then over time. Now you're out on the open market. You're bidding against other schools. You need to have guarantees from Providence's administration that you will be able to make competitive offers to players that go well beyond scholarship money. Brennan, do you think that Providence can get there financially? That's the big question, you know, Georgetown, I think, huge endowment, Providence College, they only have a select pool appeal to draw from, you know, you know, Kevin and I, we flew home on the uh, second charter the other night and trying to like look up and down the roster, like, who can they really draw money from that's already not they're not getting money from? It almost seems like they go to the same sources every time. Do you go to these people once again, can you give a little bit more because the coach wants to have the answers when recruits 
whether it's the transfer portal or high school uh, prospects, you know, how much money can I possibly get? The coach wants the answers. You know, where do you get the answers? You go to the same sources. If you're Georgetown, you might have a bigger pot to, uh, for Coach Cooley to deal with in the event he has to deal with those questions. Kevin, what is the Hail Mary play from your perspective? From Providence's Providence. point of view? Well, uh, NIL, I'll put it this way. Providence's NIL program right now is better than Georgetown's. I'd say that uh, the growth potential of Georgetown's is higher than Providence's. Uh, that is not the reason that Ed Cooley is going to leave. It, it, it is a major part. I tell you, I've heard in the last couple of days some ridiculous offers for bad players in six figures in NIL. <laughs> That's the deal right now. Sure. So you better be competitive. And Providence has done a great job in the transfer portal the last couple of years. So like Brendan and Bill said, you do need that pool. And Providence and Steve Napolillo and his team have done a great job establishing that. Uh, that is the focus going forward. And, you know, the Big East as a whole is going to have a, a problem with that because they don't have football. Talking at the Big East Conference at large, uncharted territory if this ends up going down in the coming days and weeks. What would it mean to the conference for a coach first time ever to go from one school to another and what would that reception be like for Ed Coley when he comes back to the Amica Mutual Pavilion for the first time as the head coach of the Georgetown Hoyas facing his former team? Uh, shame on the Big East. Uh, I think they should have stepped in uh, with this situation as soon as we knew that Georgetown and, Providence, uh, and Ed Cooley were dealing with it. I thought Val Ackerman, the commissioner, should have been in more direct contact with Georgetown, uh, ha have them back off until this you know, Providence season ended. So that's one. Uh, shame on the Big East. It's not good for the league. It's not good for both programs. It's especially bad if there's any player transfer between the two programs following the coach. Uh, shame on Ed Cooley if he were to go to Providence to take any players with him. That said, this is a new era of college basketball. This happened in the Big 12 a couple of years ago with Chris Beard going from Texas Tech to Texas. I'd like to, see the, I'd like to think the Big East is not the SEC. It's not semi-professional. It's getting closer. As far as protection, uh, let's just say that Ed Cooley and his uh, family members should not be in attendance when Georgetown comes in because it will not be pretty. And, and I think that's very unfair. But I think it's also reality. I've talked to too many fans in the last couple of days. They are not happy about this uh, potentially happening. I posed a loaded question to Kevin, and he detailed it very well. Let's break it down first. Uh, first, just your guys' thoughts on if Ed Cooley moves to Georgetown and what that would mean for the conference, and then we'll transition to what the fan reaction would be. Yeah, they're just like anybody else at that point. Kevin alluded to the SEC, and, and certainly you had Mike White go from Florida to Georgia this past year. Uh, you know, you can't tell me that he wasn't looking for a soft landing somewhere else, trying to get away from the Gators, but he found it in his own conference, which is you know pretty much taboo as far as the Big East goes. But if you look back, any notion of collegiality, any notion of collaboration would be gone in one second. I think Georgetown would be a pariah at that point. Uh, I think other university presidents and athletic directors would fear them in that certain way and shun them in that way. And I think they would deserve that. But the bottom line, and Kevin alluded to it, this isn't show friends, this is show business. And college basketball is bigger business than it's ever been before. Brendan? To that point, you know, I'm sure we all saw the ratings. Big East uh, championship game on Fox was down compared to a year ago, ratings-wise. You wonder if a move like having one iconic coach move to an iconic program within the league, does this make the Big East even more relevant on a national level at a time when college football dominates the landscape? I can tell you what makes the Big East more relevant if Georgetown and St. John's, and we know who's going to St. John's. Sure. He used to be here. Yep. Mm -hmm. If those two programs could ever get good again on a consistent basis, that would certainly elevate the Big East. All right, excellent stuff from all three of these guys. We will keep the Ed Cooley legacy conversation, the potential replacements for another day. Definitely uh, welcome you guys back for that, if that does happen. But for right now, you are watching the final edition of PC Hoops with Coach Cooley. We will be right back here on Fox Providence.